Welcome to September's Vitality Today Premium Video Newsletter, September 2013. I'm Dr. Edward Connolly. Today we're going to talk about Irritable Bowel Syndrome, IBS, and how it contributes to chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, autoimmune diseases like lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, thyroiditis, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, and more. And the 50 million Americans who have irritable bowel syndrome. First of all, I want to thank everybody who has sent in questions for our question and answer uh, video newsletter. It is one of the things that is prompting me to do this irritable bowel syndrome update. As many of you had questions about the bowel, and it is obvious from all the questions that we received that hundreds of you have significant bowel problems and that's not unusual because irritable bowel syndrome is perhaps one of the most common diseases in the United States. First of all, I've got to clarify something. Irritable bowel syndrome is classified as a disease but basically it means we don't know what's going on. At least traditional physicians don't know what's going on. Generally, people will get a colon scope, which will tell them that they do not have cancer, and the colon scope will be reasonably normal, perhaps showing slight inflammation, and they will be labeled as irritable bowel syndrome, given medications, to use for the rest of their lives. and We have been dealing and working with people here for the last several months and have gotten some tremendous results from people who've had irritable bowel syndrome and been reasonably miserable for 10, 20, 30 years. And my question to you is this, if you have irritable bowel syndrome, what are you going to do? Take medications for the next 40 years? Or are you going to work to find out what's causing your bowel to malfunction. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Because really that's what I'm about and that's what this clinic is about. is finding out what's going on underneath and fixing it when we can. So let's get started. How does that contribute to chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, and autoimmune diseases? Many ways that that can happen. First of all, I guess the question is, how does the bowel get screwed up or irritable? That is a much easier question to answer. What happens is the bowel gets overgrown with either abnormal bacteria, parasites, yeast, or all of the above. It gets diminished good bacteria so it cannot digest properly. You may get on top of that parasites, and we've been finding more parasites in the last two years than I have found in the last 25 years of my clinical practice. Millions of Americans are traveling and uh, see the previous video update, which is on the um, YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel is FFCM Clinic see the update on parasites from earlier this year. So we get abnormal bacteria or overgrowth of yeast. Millions of you have had large amounts of antibiotics for ear, nose, and throat infections as a kid, for months or years of treating acne as a teen, for urinary tract infections or sinus infections as an adult, and it has decimated your good bacteria in your bowel. It allows overgrowth of yeast because yeast is not killed by the antibiotics and it may allow overgrowth of abnormal tough pathogenic bacteria. Then the bowel starts to malfunction. It cannot digest the nutrients from your food properly. It begins to spasm. Inflammation builds up and you start getting diminishing returns from the food you're eating. You're not getting the nutrients you need, vitamins, minerals, amino acids, and 
you're off to the races with irritable bowel syndrome. So the causes, the underlying causes of irritable bowel syndrome are very easy to understand. Unfortunately, that's not the way that most physicians are trained. Most physicians will tell you that we don't know what causes irritable bowel syndrome and I really think that that's ridiculous at this point in 2013. I mean, it's certainly we may not know all the factors with irritable bowel. And I always have, <laughs> I go nuts. When I attend these lectures given by these prestigious bowel doctors who say either irritable bowel syndrome is all in somebody's head or that it's in some sort of nervous, abnormal nervous system, uh, to me that's just, uh, I don't know, I, it, it's hard to really put into words how crazy that sounds. That's like saying somebody has a malfunction of the leg, they have an infection, and it's all in their head because their leg is killing them. Swollen, red, pus, and so you can tell my frustration when I hear lectures like that. It's all I can do not to stand up in the middle of them and wonder what they're thinking. But that is the way traditional medicine thinks right now. That there is no known cause for chronic fatigue syndrome and therefore the only thing we can do is give you medicines to reduce the spasms for the rest of your life. Fortunately, the larger pharmaceutical companies have bumped their way into d developing or understanding probiotics and you now will see probiotic advertisements on TV, especially during the ball games, and that at least has been one beneficial aspect of the larger pharmaceutical companies figuring out that they can make money on probiotics. So at least now more people are getting information about probiotics and replacing the bowel bacteria that they need. But unfortunately, 90 out of 100 doctors never give you a probiotic when they give you an antibiotic. They never replace the, the good bacteria even when they've given you IV antibiotics in the hospital. And that has to change, but it will change slowly, so protect yourself. So other things that can contribute to irritable bowel, low enzymes, if you do not have the digestive enzymes that you need, that can contribute. Allergies play a huge part in irritable bowel syndrome. Certainly gluten sensitivity. And see the previous Vitality Today video on gluten sensitivity. We have been finding many, many people who are gluten allergic slash sensitive but either have never been tested or were just done with the blood test and missed them being gluten sensitive but not necessarily having celiac disease. Other food allergies such as milk, wheat, and others can contribute to the irritable bowel and we've already talked a little bit about some of the pathogenic bacteria. It doesn't all have to be yeast. There are abnormal bacteria like Clostridia, Enterobacter, and others, Campylobacter, which if they are overgrown can contribute significantly to inflammation, pain, and some researchers suggest that those abnormal bacteria directly contribute as an underlying cause or contributing factor to autoimmune disease and possibly fibromyalgia. Well, how do these contribute to autoimmune disease, chronic fatigue syndrome, and fibromyalgia? What happens is if you are overgrown with yeast, it ramps up your immunity, it increases autoimmunity, and it makes certain part of your immunity hyperactive where you will develop inflammation and therefore pain. As we've talked about many times, inflammation will reduce your energy by affecting the mitochondria. If you don't understand what mitochondria are, please see chapter three in my America Exhausted book on how the mitochondria works. That's our energy producing machinery inside our cells. Inflammation is now being found to be a contributing factor 
to many diseases including heart disease and cancer but the important part for this program is that it is a contributing factor to fibromyalgia autoimmune diseases like lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, thyroiditis, Crohn's, ulcerative colitis and more as you know there's about a hundred autoimmune diseases so things like candida overgrowth now candida overgrowth can increase inflammation abnormal bacteria can increase inflammation or directly produce toxins allergy such as gluten or other milk allergy significantly increase inflammation and as we've already mentioned briefly um, that inflammation that decreased bowel function definitely affects your absorption of nutrients over the course of years it doesn't mean that you're not absorbing any nutrients it simply means that you may be getting five or ten percent reduction but over the course of years it's like spending 10% more than you make. In 10 years, you're in trouble. Well, what do we do to improve? That's the key. That's one of the key things that we work on at this clinic. I've spent 30 years working on irritable bowel syndrome. First of all, it is important to realize that you need specialized treatment. You need special stool tests to determine what is going on in there so that we can more appropriately treat it. Your basic stool tests through your family doctor or even through a bowel specialist are not adequate for your problems. It's nice if they're negative, but it does not mean you do not have problems. We have specialized stool tests that are some of the best in the world and we will be happy to talk with you about those but you need specialized treatment because as I said we have seen people who have suffered for decade or more and once we found out some of the problems it's not easy we can't give them a medicine and have them all better by next week but slowly you can restore your normal bowel function reduce the yeast hopefully get rid of the parasites reduce the abnormal bacteria, improve the enzymes, stay away from the foods that, are, that you're allergic to or sensitive to, and the bowel starts to return to more normal function, less pain, less diarrhea, less bloating, less cramps, less inflammation, less muscle pain, less fatigue, and the lower your autoimmunity for inflammation. You need the correct allergy tests. You need the proper gluten test, which includes a specialized saliva that we do, along with the appropriate blood tests. You know, it amazes me how many people that I see with irritable bowel that have not yet even had the blood test for gluten. And so you need the proper allergy tests, and we will discuss those you need the proper stool tests you need the proper testing to let us know what's going on because you can all write to me and say tell me what to do but quite honestly without knowing your specific case and knowing what your testing says I have as much chance of that as I do of predicting the lotto numbers tomorrow night so we need to know your individual problems because everyone is unique and different. Get the studies done correctly. And then what we do is that there are treatments. 